Now, let's have a look at this for a second. Just like we've seen before, integration by parts is not always obvious for how to use it. And this is a product, right? This is a product. So we just have to think about, well, what's a nice convenient way that we can slice this up and get something useful out of it so I can get a U and a DB, okay? So I'm gonna go here. Okay. There we go. Now, how would you like me to divide this up? Just have a think about it for a second. Okay. What I want, just like I had in this form, is I want something that's going to get progressively smaller and smaller and smaller, and something else which more or less stays the same, which was the e of the x term over here. Okay. So when I have a look at this, how can I divide this up? Okay. Any suggestions? Yeah. Okay, so I could multiply by one. Do you remember when we were integrating sine inverse? Okay, um, I chose sine inverse and one, and then it sort of worked out. It was kind of nice because I think you ended up getting something like, I think your VDU ended up being from memory, I think it was something like this. Is that, is that right? Something, uh, yeah, because that was, that was your integral there, that was the V, there's your G, it was fine. Because this you can deal with how? This is reverse chain rule, right? If you let u equal 1 minus x squared, then you've got u to the negative a half, and then you've got d on dx up there. So that's cool. Well, a version of it, you just multiply by minus 2, okay? So that's fine. In this case, though, if I choose cos n to the x and 1, and put them in somewhere here, well, which one's going to be which? Which one will be u and which one will be dv? U would be uh, cos n. Yeah, you'd put cos n to the x here, right? Because you don't want to integrate that guy, right? That's just going to, it's not going to be a fun time. It's going to get worse for you, isn't it, right? So you'd put it here. Well, then when you differentiate it here, you're going to have, what are you going to put here then? One. This is going to become x. But x and this cos n to the minus one, blah, 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 they're not going to marry nicely unlike this guy, right? So that ends up making the problem worse. So here's what I'm going to try instead. And I agree, this doesn't immediately look like it would make things better, but it does. I'm going to write cos n to the x as cos x times, now if I've pulled out one of them, right, this is n cosines multiplied by themselves, right? So if I've taken out one, how many are left? Good. Okay, now this doesn't seem like it improves things much, but actually it's going to be the key to getting something like this, which we can work with for our VDU, okay? watch. I wanted to choose, uh, like I did over here, I wanted to choose a u which got progressively better as I differentiated it again and again, and I wanted to choose a dv that more or less stayed as the same thing, okay, more or less. So which one am I going to choose? Which one is more or less every time you differentiate it or integrate it is basically going to stay the same, and which one's going to get better and better and better? Um, yeah, if you integrate cosine, you get Sine. If you integrate that, uh, no, sine, sine. If you integrate that, you'll get negative cosine. You integrate that, you're, you're staying in the same um, degree of tree functions, right? So this is the part that's more or less going to stay the same. And this is the part which hopefully we want the power to reduce, just like it did over here. Does that make sense? Okay. So you see my thought process? Let's actually um, bash this out there. So I'm going to put cos n to the minus 1 x up there. What's the derivative? I'm going to need chain rule here, right? This is cos x all to the power of n minus 1. So I'm going to do the outside first. The power comes down at the front. The power reduces by 1. And then chain rule, chain rule, what am I missing? Yep, the derivative of the inside. Now, I admit that looks gross, but don't lose heart yet. I'm going to stick with it. What have I got over here? This is the, um, the single cos x that I pulled out. And we already established you differentiate that, uh, integrate that rather, and you get your sign. So I'm hoping and praying that this is going to sort of come out in the wash for me. Let's see what happens. I've got the UV that's going to come out the front. So that looks like sine x cos n minus 1. Okay. Now what appears in here? Let's have a look here. Look carefully. Uh, when you do your integral here, right, uh, what's going to appear inside the integral? Well, I've got v du, 
Yeah. V-D-U. So it looks to me like there's a couple of things happening. I'm going to write it all out so I don't make, muck up any signs by accident. I've got n minus 1 cos n minus 2x. And there's a minus sign x there. There's the du part. Here is the v part. And I've placed that one on the end. So you can see these two guys are going to get together. <laughs> dx. What do you think? Now, when you have a look at this, what, what sort of things leap out at you for like, oh, I could do something here. I could do something here. What, what sort of choices do you have? Yeah, yeah for your choices. Very good. So for starters, I'm going to just put this guy out here. You're okay with that, just to simplify. But this side squared x, even though it's like, we looked at this and thought, oh, uh, yuck, okay? But just like here, these sine squared x we can write as 1 minus cos squared, and that's going to interact with this. Do you see that? Okay. Why don't you get a head start on me on this next line? Because don't, don't you know, rush through this. Make sure you get everything right. Starts off here, but what ends up in that integral? Don't forget to take out your n minus 1. Okay, now I hope you've gotten to... This line is only a couple of down from where we left off. I want you to pause and look at this, right? What have I got now? Uh, in the first place, you think, wait a second. I was hoping for something. It would just be nice and neat and easy. And it's not immediately obvious what's going on here. This is, in fact, two integrals, right? And to help you see that, I'm going to separate these out. So I've got this guy at the front that's already been integrated. Now, I'm going to write this as a pair of integrals because I actually need to deal with them differently. You've got here n minus 1 lots of... Now, if you just look at this part... Let me, let me put this in a cup here. If you've just got that part and you're integrating that with respect to x, this looks familiar. This is something in that same family that I started with, right? I define i n as cos x to that power, n. This is cos x to a different power n minus 2, right? So I can simply write this whole thing, I can replace that with i n minus 2. That's what that is. Okay. And then you have this second integral next to it, right? You've still got n minus 1 lots of it, because remember, it belongs from, from this integral here. But if you have a look at this guy, you're like, wait a second. That's what I began with. That's i n. This is almost exactly what happened in our e to the negative x cos x example, it's like, hey, wait, he comes back, right? I've got n minus 1 lots of the original integral. I've already integrated. So isn't it minus uh, Yes, yes, you're exactly right. Which I'm going to need in a second, okay? So, so what have I done here? This is, this is the hardest step in getting to the recurrence relation. I really need to tidy up algebraically now because look at this, right? I've got a pattern now of i n here, 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 and all the actual integration by parts to get this rule have, has been done. So let's just tidy up a little bit to finish. I want to get i n equals something. I want to make that the subject, okay? So I'm going to add n minus 1 lots of i n to both sides to get it away from this right-hand side. Does that make sense? So on the left-hand side, I've got i n plus this. Yep. Uh, what have I got on the right-hand side? There's the u v that I started with. And then you've got this part, which interestingly, uh, n minus 2, it skipped 1. Do you remember when we were doing the exponential one? And you got n, then you got n minus 1, then you got n minus 2, etc. Okay? This time I've skipped to n minus 2. Why is that? That's a lot of coincidence. Why is it 2? Because you start with n minus 1, like, as in, like, you split it to 2. Hmm. It's because when you... Now I'll give you a clue. It has something to do with the fact that these are trick functions. These are trig functions, not polynomials. Remember, I compared, oh, there's something that gets better and better and better. And so it has to do with this, right? We chose, and you are on the right track, we chose n minus 1, right, as our part to differentiate. So when you differentiate that, you skip a step. You've gone straight to n minus 2, right? And when these bits get together, that's sort of what comes out in the most once you simplify everything, okay? So please note that. In fact, this time, stepping down means you've gone yeah, two steps. So now here I just need to tidy up. What do I got here on the left hand side? This is, yeah, you see this guy is going to cancel with that. Yep. So all you're left with is n lots of i n equals this. And then to finish, to make i n the subject, I'm just going to divide through by n. Traditionally, because we don't want to write a huge 
it's called a vinculum, the, the fraction side. We write the one over n at the front, and then you're done. Okay, so, so here, this now leads to a couple of questions, which I'm not going to explore completely on the board for you. I'm going to do one example, one application of this. But this leads to the question of, be careful, be careful. In this case, for example, what would it look like if I said n equals 1? What would happen? Well, if n equals 1, I don't need integration by parts for this, do I? Because if n equals 1, you're just getting the integral of cos x. That's fine. I'm sign it. But you have to make sure that you think that and not just blindly go to the formula because otherwise you have this. Right? And you say, I have 1 minus 2, just following along the definition is I have negative 1. Okay? But that would be, uh, according to what I've defined it to be, that would be cos negative, uh, I don't write it that. I'm going to write it like this, right? But that's, we know what that is, that's the integral of sec x, that's following a completely different thing. Right? This is actually something in a whole different family altogether. Okay? So this is what I mentioned before. The, when, we, when we define these, they're not always defined for all values and you have to be a little bit careful with them. Okay? We'll dig into some more specific examples a bit later on. 